G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. It's Jesse here, and in today's video, we're gonna be doing a new version of a video that I did a couple of years ago, looking at the top 10 players from the 2026 season, projecting which players in the competition will be the top 10 elite five years from now. Now, this concept may ring a bell for you. I did this in 2019 as well, projecting the top 10 players of the 2024 season. So that's still kind of relevant, still interesting to look back on. But I thought for 2021, we'll look even further into the future, five years from now, who is going to be the 10 best players of the competition. Now, look, I can see all of you currently staring at my beautiful mustache. And I just want to remind you, my eyes are up here, please. But to be honest, the mustache is just a mere distraction from the fact that I've also got a bit of a mullet going on. So whatever you think of my current fashion choices, just be rest assured, it's definitely not a quarter life crisis. You would have seen very recently, we launched our new weekly tip show here on True Footy called Just The Tips. You should go check that out. Druzy and I put together the first episode for round one out yesterday. That's going to be a weekly thing as well as the Drew Footy Show on his channel where we talk about the previous round as it happens as well. So between the two channels, plenty of football content coming up this season. Further to that, I did announce as well fairly late in the piece, to be fair. We are going to be doing footy tipping again. We are going to be doing the AFL Fantasy League. So in the description of this video, you can go check out the various invite links. I think we had an issue at first with the footy tipping comp where uh, you needed a password to join. I've removed that, so it should all be good now. And one last thing before we actually crack into the video, definitely go check out our sponsor of today's video, manscaped.com as well, and you get 20% off their male grooming products. Uh, if you use the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word, 20% off and free shipping. It's an absolute deal, so go check that out. But enough stalling, let's get into the actual video itself and start talking about which 10 players I think will be the top 10 elite players in five years from now. I'm not going to do it in any particular order. I've just nominated 10 players and I'm going to start with potentially the best one of them all to be fair, Marcus Bontempelli. So I'm sure all of you already know who Marcus Bontempelli is. He's 25 years old. He's a captain of the Bulldogs footy club. He's won three best and fairest there and three all Australians, which is a remarkable rap sheet for a guy just at 25. So he will be 30 years old during the 2026 season. But to be honest, I predict longevity for the Bont, particularly if they're going to be playing him forward a lot. We know how stacked that Bulldogs midfield is and it may be best served for him to play a bit forward and preserve his career. His combo of, you know, being an athletic beast, I think he's 193 centimeters and 93 kilos uh, for a big midfielder. That is enormous. But not only that, he's sort of got the poise of someone like a Pendlebury, maybe not quite on that level, but the footy nous as well. He's got that dangerous combo. To be honest, I think he'll probably be the best player in the game over the next five years after that sort of Dusty and Fife era ends. So that's a pretty safe bet for me. Marcus Bontempelli is still a top 10 player in the game five years from now. Next up, we've got someone that I was criticized for for omitting in the 2024 edition. And to be fair, that's looking like a bad call by me. I'm going with Harris Andrews, who will turn 29 in the 2026 season. To be honest, it's hard to believe he's only 24 years old, considering he plays at such an elite level already. He's arguably already the best key back in the game, a lot of people would say. He's won multiple All-Australians in that position. I don't really need to make too much of a case for Harris Andrews. 29 is well within the peak of a key position defender, and it's just really hard to imagine him not being in that top 10 five years from now. Next up is my first kind of roll of the dice. I'm going with Jordan Dugowie, who's obviously an extremely dangerous midfielder forward option, really explosive, and had a breakout year in 2018, kicking 48 goals. Hasn't quite reached those heights since through you know a variety of different reasons, but that game-breaking ability is Dusty level. He may not reach the Dusty Martin level. I don't imagine too many players will reach the Dusty Martin level, but I think with his pure raw game-winning ability, there's a good chance he's a top 10 player in five years from him. Now, what's his best position? To be honest, I think for Collingwood, they need to preserve him as a forward. Obviously, you know, he might have a longer career if he plays predominantly forward, but he's just such a dangerous goal kicker. That's where I'd leave him, and I think he will be a top 10 player five years from now. Next up, I'm going with another conservative one. I'm going with Brody Grundy, and a lot of people will say that he is probably still the best ruck in the game despite a poor 2020, and obviously the amazing season by Nick Nat Nui, but you have to say Grundy well and truly has him covered over the course of his career. Now, Grundy's been a guy who's played at a high level for a long time, which is quite rare for a ruck. They don't normally come on as early as Brody Grundy did in his career. He's going to turn 27 this year, which means he turns 32 in 2026. But looking at the history of ruckmen, doesn't really seem to preclude them from playing well deep into their sort of early 30s. Look, maybe at 32, he's just a little bit past it, but I'm going to still back him in. I'm going to say Brody Grundy is thereabouts in 2026. Next up, I'm going with another explosive forward mid, this time Christian Petrarca, and we know that he broke out towards the end of 2019 and throughout 2020, and that culminated in him finishing top three in the Brownlow last year. 
Similar to Dugowie, he's an explosive, strong-bodied forward mid, and he's pretty strong on the inside and the outside. He's a very, very well-rounded player, and I think the last box he really needed to tick before becoming elite was just developing that consistency, and I think it's fair to say he smashed that in 2020. So he's 25 currently, which means he'll be turning 30 in the year of 2026. That being said, I just see, again, like the others, a bit of longevity in his game. I think he'll still be around the mark five years from now. Next up, I'm going to nominate Paddy Cripps, who obviously is currently already kind of considered a champion of the game at 25 years old. He's a captain of his club. He's won two All-Australians and, you know, he didn't have the best year in 2020. I think there was some physical and mental issues going on with Paddy. That being said, it looks like he's come back in absolutely roaring nick. He's poised for a huge 2021 and I think that will springboard him pretty much through the rest of his career. He's a player that gets compared to Bont quite a lot and I'll do that again in this video. I think he'll be playing a fair bit of time forward as Carlton's midfield develops and they'll also be thinking about preserving Paddy's career into his early to mid 30s. As such, I think he's going to have a long peak just like Bond and I think he'll still be one of the best players five years from now. Next up, I'm going to go with Carlton's young gun key defender, Jacob Wiedering, who was pick one a number of years ago. Maybe he kind of stuttered a little bit in the second year of his career, if I'm not mistaken, but he's come back strong and in 2020 absolutely broke out. He definitely was in the conversation for all Australian selection, didn't quite make it, but I think the fact that he won Carlton's best and fairest is a huge feather in his cap. He's only 23 years old currently, which means that he will be 28 five years from now, and that again puts him in that sweet spot for key defenders. He's also got great leadership credentials as well which makes him potentially a future leader of the club if Paddy Cripps ends up handing it away but long story short Wiedering is going to be a very complete player and probably a top 10 player five years from now now I've gone through this entire video so far without naming a key forward those ones are a little bit harder to pick but I'm going to say Aaron Norton is the best key forward in the game five years from now look there's some other very good young key forward prospects in the league most notably you know the King Twins Logan McDonald is another one that comes to mind but I do wonder if they're just a little bit younger obviously the North and I wonder if they're going to be quite at their peak by the time 2026 rolls around. Either way, it's hard to make a compelling case that anyone is more talented than Norton in the key forward position. He obviously had a down year in 2020, and I think part of that was being, you know, underdone from injury. I think he kicked 15 goals in 12 games. That being said, we did see some flashes where he think he kicked a bag of six against Adelaide as well, and he's such a strong contested mark and high-flying player that he is dangerous whenever he's on the field. He's pretty ahead of the curve. You forget that he's only a 21-year-old key forward. A lot of them barely crack a game before they turn 21 anyway, but Norton feels like he's been around for a number of years. He's such an incredible contested mark. I just can't imagine him not being one of the premier big men in the competition at 26 years old. There is a slight chance he does flip it up and go to the back line where he was uh, drafted from as a key defender. He'd make a great intercepting key defender, much like Jeremy McGovern. That being said, I hope he plays forward. I think that's where the dogs need him, and he will be an absolute gun five years from now. Next up, I'm going to nominate another Bulldog, Bailey Smith, and his outrageous talent is probably only overshadowed by his extreme handsomeness. He's an explosive, hard-working midfielder who really catches the eye when he's out there for a number of reasons. <laughs> He's a really explosive, hardworking midfielder. He's put together 41 games at the Bulldogs, and personally, I think he's ready for an absolute breakout year. He's already a pretty crucial cog in that Bulldogs midfield. I think he's ready to explode, and you can imagine where he'll be in about five years. I think he'll be right in the mix for a Brownlow medal. A lot gets talked about young elite mids such as Sammy Walsh or Matty Rao, but personally, I think there's a good chance Bailey Smith becomes the best of the lot. The final player that I'd like to nominate in this top 10 is young Swans half-forward midfielder Isaac Heaney. Now, I feel like Heaney was just about rarely to go at the start of the 2020 season, kick four goals in round one, and then from memory, he busted his ankle and then didn't play much, if any, football at all throughout the rest of the year. He's mercurial. He can take a grab. When the ball hits the deck, he's dangerous as well. He's a goal scorer, and obviously, he can find the footy as well. If Sydney become a good team, which I think in three to four years is a good chance they're a top four team, Heaney will be a critical part of that. As such, I think there's a really good chance he springboards himself into the top 10 players of the competition. So that's my top 10 guys. I wouldn't be surprised if the reaction to this is perhaps is a little bit conservative. There's a lot of names in that that are still obviously, you know, top 10 players arguably in the competition right now, particularly the taller stocks. And it's just hard to imagine anyone displacing someone like a Bont or a Cripps or even a Brody Grundy for me as being top 
top 10 players. I did have some other nominations for being potentially top 10 players of the comp. The obvious ones for me as talls would be the King Twins. But again, I think they're just a little bit raw for me to really vote on them with any genuine confidence. Personally, I'm just a little bit more confident about Aaron Norton being that elite player. Someone like a Matty Rao might seem like an obvious miss, but at 24 years old, there's a chance he's not a top 10 player of the competition yet. Although I'd be very surprised if he doesn't pinch a Brownlow at some point in his career. I just think that peak might come a little bit later. Again, I touched on Logan McDonald, who's probably one of the more talented key forward prospects in the game, in my opinion, but again, so raw. And at 23 years old, good chance he's nowhere near the top 10 in the comp. Some other midfielders that come to mind, Zachy Merritt's going to be about 30 as well. I don't know if he's top 10 potential, but I'm sure he's the sort of player who will be playing well, well into his 30s. Tim Taranto's another good one who won the best and fairest at the Giants at something like 20 or 21 years old. I think he'll be around the mark. Sammy Walsh, of course, from Carlton. It's hard to imagine him not being a very good player. And also throw in someone like an Andrew Brayshaw or Adam Chero from Fremantle. Those guys will be reaching their peak and will be around the mark for this list as well. But that's it, guys. Thank you for watching my video. Make sure you let me know in the comments below what you think I got right or what you think I got wrong, or perhaps have a crack at your own top 10 as well. If you do me one last favor, go check out my second channel, Cole World. The link is in the description. It's a podcast I do with my roommate, Dylan. We talk a lot about life and self-help bullshit. So uh, if you're into that sort of thing, I'd appreciate you go checking that out. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.